What up everybody, I hope you guys had a very safe and Merry Christmas with your loved ones and whoever you chose to spend the holidays with. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you've had a safe holiday. I had a safe holiday, spent time with my family, and you know I'm an adult when I get excited that I got some house slippers, a coffee grinder to grind my coffee beans, some very 30 year old ass gifts that I was very excited about but I wanted to bring in well not the new year technically yet but I wanted to bring in my return from the holiday with a video about a team that has been one of the most interesting teams in the NBA and a Western Conference sleeping giant that is going to be in our collective basketball brains for years to come and that is the Memphis Grizzlies. Now the Grizzlies obviously were kind of put on the national map last year after they beat the Warriors in the play-in tournament and then lost to the Utah Jazz in five games. The more tuned in basketball fan knew about the Grizzlies because one they had a roster they still have a roster just full of prospects that all the draft nerds have loved over the last few years and we'll get to those guys in a minute. And then, of course, the talent headlined by up and rising superstar point guard John ja Morant and just a really intriguing and interesting big man in Jaron Jackson Jr. now that he's healthy. And so we all kind of were tracking the Grizzlies to see if they were going to take the next step, make their imprint in a conference. And now that the conference is just wide open, this is literally one of the weakest Western conferences that I have seen in a very long time. The Grizzlies, I think, have a golden opportunity here to just establish themselves as one of the mainstays in the West, coming off of a great era in the grit and grind era, one of my favorite eras of the 2010 decade in the NBA, obviously led by Mike Conley, Zach Randolph, and Marc Gasol. Can't forget Tony Allen either, Mr. First Team All Defense. And now we're kind of in a new, not grit and grind era, but a Grind and Grit Remix? I don't know, I like to reverse the names backwards. I don't know. Memphis fans can come up with something way better than that. I butchered it. But anyway, the Grizzlies were kind of, you know, to start the year, they were 6-4. and four. Then they lost 5 out of 8. And their defense was just putrid compared to last year to start the season. And then John Morant's injury happened against the Atlanta Hawks on November 26th. And... No, I'm not going to be one of those guys that says the Grizzlies were better without John Morant. That is just stupid. I knew that conversation was going to come and I just did not want to participate in it because I just think it was just pointless to have. But I do think there was some truth in the Grizzlies finding themselves a little bit and finding their identity, coupled with the fact that Dylan Brooks did come back also after starting off the season injured. And now the Grizzlies are fourth in the West. They are clearly ahead of the Denver Nuggets and the LA Clippers, who are tied with, in terms of games back of the fourth seed. And they're deep, they're good, they have young talent, and they have isolation scores, and they play together. So let's break down the Memphis Grizzlies. I think one of the main reasons the Grizzlies have now righted the ship and are now standing at 21 and 14 after coming off of a very big win against the Phoenix Suns on the road last night, and it was a fantastic game by the way, is that Jaron Jackson Jr. has been really healthy for a lot of this season. He's only missed one game this year, and he is finally now able to play and display the skills that he showed his rookie year, his second year, but most importantly, there are some notable improvements. I think the two-point field goal percentage needs to be bumped up a lot. Him not shooting above 50% from two is concerning, but I think that's going to ride itself. The three-point shot is still coming around compared to the first two years. He's a good shooter. I believe in the shot, obviously. I think he's going to get right back up to around 37%, but he is still displaying his versatility on offense playing both positions, playing mainly the four next to Steven Adams, playing the five in some lineups, even though Jaron Jackson at the center is still barely a minus in the lineup data. It still looks good when you watch it with your eyes. The improvement comes in the fact that one, Jaron Jackson's healthy, and two, he's not fouling as much as he used to in his first two years. 
This is the lowest foul rate that he has had in his career. You can look up the numbers on NBA.com, Cleaning the Glass, whatever site you want to look at that tracks that stuff. Jaron Jackson has improved in just not fouling and staying on the court. Now, part of that is he's probably getting more respect as he gains more years under his belt in the NBA, but he's also more experienced. He's not as reachy. He's using his length better. I just think Jaron Jackson Jr. has just gotten smarter in how he plays. But not only that, he's just expanding his versatility on offense. We all know he can shoot. He can shoot off movement, which is just crazy that a 6'11 guy can just come off of a screen and shoot off movement. But he is also taking mismatches down on the block. He's adding a little dribble drive to his game more. This is the most I've seen him drive. He's just really expanded his game, and he really took his game to another level after John Morant went down, like a lot of the players on the roster that I will touch on later. So after the November 26th loss against the Hawks when John Morant sprained his knee, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s numbers bumped up. He's been averaging 18.6 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, and 1.2 assists. Now, again, the field goal numbers are really low, and I would like to see him be more efficient, but he, again, he's 22 years old, and also I just think he's still rounding out his game. The main thing is, for his development, is that he's on the court and he's producing. He is a menace on the defensive end of the floor. The Grizzlies have righted the ship in terms of defensive rating, and we will get to those numbers later on. But the most important thing is, is Jaron Jackson has taken another leap. The Grizzlies were right to give him that contract, and hopefully Grizzlies fans and Suns fans can finally stop arguing over who had the better center or who drafted the better big in the 2018 draft. You both got great players, all right? Let's just, let's just chill out. You guys got great players, and Jaron Jackson Jr. is a big for the future. The Grizzlies are just super productive when Jaron Jackson's on the floor, period. The Grizzlies are a plus 6.7 in net rating when Jaron Jackson is on the court. You can see it in the games. He just impacts the game on both ends of the floor. The next thing, obviously, I want to get to on this team is that they are deep, and not only are they deep, they are deep with chock full of very, very good NBA players and young prospects. This team is basically every draft nerd's fantasy land in terms of all the prospects that are on this team, whether they've traded for them, whether they've drafted them with Morant and Jaron Jackson. And you think a lot of these players were drafted by the Grizzlies, but the Grizzlies have just made smart trades and drafted them before their rookie year, like Desmond Bain, for example. But look at the list. Jaron Jackson, John Morant, Dylan Brooks, DeAnthony Melton, Brandon Clark, Desmond Bain, John Conchar is rounding out in his third year on the team and he has gave them productive minutes, especially in the 10 and two stretch that Morant was out. He was shooting something like 65% from three or some crazy number like that. Second round pick Xavier Tillman will come in and just provide very good minutes as a backup big at either spot. And then Killian Tilly has even chipped in with minutes here and there. Yesterday, he had a surprise poster dunk that just shocked the shit out of me, but it was awesome. All of these players are good. And let me just touch on Dylan Brooks. He's kind of one of the elder statesmen, if you will, of the guys that are the young prospects. He was a rookie when Mike Conley was still on the Grizzlies. Not only is he an awesome defender, I just love his crazy attitude. I love that he acts like he has never committed a foul in his whole life. Meanwhile, he's just bowling dudes over on the defensive end. But also, he's a bull in a china shop on the offensive end using his big ass frame to get shots off, bull his way to the rim. And then after he makes a shot, he'll probably just talk shit to whoever is in his vicinity. I love Dylan Brooks. Desmond Bain has taken a mega leap in his game that I think even the most optimistic draft guy who loved Desmond Bain was shocked by. We all knew that Desmond Bain was a good three and D player coming out of TCU. Draft nerds were freaking out that he kept falling in the 2020 draft. And on that faithful day, the Celtics traded away Desmond Bain, you think they could use Bain right now, to the Grizzlies. And he was good as a rookie. He was a knockdown shooter. He was everything is advertised. Yeah, he had a short wingspan, but that dude is built like a fucking linebacker. And now this year, he has on-ball skills. He is super fast in transition. It's terrifying watching him just dribble the ball full court he's going like 200 miles an hour it's like a bowling ball or a wrecking ball just 
rolling down the court, the pull-up three, the off-the-dribble three, the off-screen threes. He's just become a versatile scorer now. And the development of him, of course, we all know De'Anthony Melton has consistently been a great player off the bench for the Grizzlies, one of the best 3 and D guards in the NBA. And, you know, it's funny, me and my friend would always talk about DeAnthony Melton when he was a rookie for the Phoenix Suns, because my friend is a Phoenix Suns fan. And I was just like, man, the Suns would do really good to just keep DeAnthony Melton, but then the Grizzlies end up getting him. Brandon Clark is starting to bounce back after what I thought was a down year in his second year, and for some reason he changed his shot his second year. It looked really weird, but... His rookie year, he was fantastic, and then I thought he really took a step back his second year. But I think he's been better, obviously. Obviously, there are better players ahead of him, so he's not getting as much time as he did his rookie year, but Brandon Clark is still a good prospect as well, contributing. And then like I mentioned earlier, Xavier Tillman is backing up Steven Adams and Jaron Jackson Jr., and he's just beating up bench bigs with offensive rebounds. Just look at Xavier Tillman's rebounding numbers especially on the offensive glass it's absurd so not only have the young guys been growing over the last two or three years you mix in some veterans that are actually productive not just veterans that'll sit at the end of the bench and try to give the young guys game but veterans that know how to play and can play and are effective this Grizzlies team has been good, and let's get to those vets. Because Tyus Jones signing a three-year deal back in 2019, I thought at the time that was a steal. I always liked him in Minnesota. I always thought he kind of got the shaft whenever Tom Thibodeau was coaching, because you know how Thibs is with young guys. And I thought guys like Nemanja Bialica and Tyus Jones kind of got the shaft in terms of minutes when Tom Thibodeau was in Minnesota it was always inconsistent minutes but every time Tyus Jones played I thought he was a good NBA player not anything spectacular just a solid guard you would love to have off the bench and during the stretch that Morant was out before he returned against OKC Tyus Jones was fantastic in the 10 and 2 stretch that Morant was out and that's my point with this team there are just so many damn good players on this team that Guys can be out with health and safety protocols. The Grizzlies have like five guys in health and safety protocol right now. They have a bunch of guys injured and in health and safety protocol, but the team is so deep it doesn't matter because they just have waves of guys. This team is physical. They are built like a football team, which is why you see the very funny and stupid thumbnail I put together. And that physicality, the epitome of that physicality is Steven Adams. Now, I was the first to say on this channel, I wasn't a fan of the Steven Adams trade. I thought they should have kept Jonas Valanciunas, but it was very clear that I was wrong immediately. They are using Adams in different ways than he was used in New Orleans, where I thought he looked washed, and also the fit with him and Zion was just bad from the start, along with Eric Bledsoe for some reason. Again, David Griffin is just a terrible president of basketball operations. But anyway, Steven Adams has been used on the elbow as a passer. He is mauling dudes on the offensive glass. If you look at the offensive rebounding numbers, Steven Adams is playing out of his mind. Even by his standards, he has always been a beast on the glass. But this year, he has been absolutely absurd. He's been like Godzilla. And on top of that, Kyle Anderson, who is going to be a free agent, I believe, after this season is over... He has been great as well, especially at the four. And he's also one of those players, those vets that stepped up when John Morant went down and the Grizzlies went 10-2 in that stretch. Every time Kyle Anderson was at the four, the Grizzlies were like a plus seven during that stretch. This team can just mix and match different lineups. They are versatile. They are physical. They are just, they're built like a football team. And not only that, they play together, they play connected, everybody plays connected, they know their roles well, and this team is just going to keep growing and growing because this team is super young. Their defense is hellacious. Like I mentioned, before John Morant's injury on November 26, the Grizzlies were dead stinking last in defensive rating. They allowed 117.5 points per 100 possessions. And then since John Morant's injury, the Grizzlies righted the ship 
I believe head coach Taylor Jenkins mentioned something about switching back to the old defensive principles they had last year. And the Grizzlies have been a terror with turnovers. They have turned so many teams over. They're one of the best teams in the league at forcing turnovers. Their transition attack, the turnovers obviously supercharged their transition attack. And since November 28th, the Grizzlies have been second in defensive rating behind the Cleveland Cavaliers who have just been demolishing teams on that end of the floor at 101 points per 100 possessions. And the offense has been fantastic. 115 points per 100 possessions. And it's because of the guys like John Morant, Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, Jaron Jackson Jr. All these guys are good and they do different things. And they do different things on the offensive end. And one of the reasons I like this Grizzlies team heading into the playoffs, I don't know if they can beat the top dogs like the Suns or the Warriors in a series. Even maybe the Jazz, I am starting to be very interested in Donovan Mitchell's leap that is happening before our eyes. The Grizzlies in a playoff setting, they have three guys who can get their own shot. John Morant, Dylan Brooks, and Desmond Bain. Now how that's all going to coalesce, how are they going to react? Because again, they are super young and inexperienced when it comes to playoff situations, even though they got a taste last year. We just have to see how they'll react, but I like the composition of this team. And going forward, going forward over the next three or four years, this team, the Memphis Grizzlies, they are a sleeping giant in the Western Conference.